The Dallas Cowboys have found a gem in right guard TJ Bass. And today we are going to analyze his tape because he has so many really, really nice blocks. This was the first play of the game in the third preseason game. But keep in mind, this guy's been doing this the entire preseason, the entire camp. And trust me, I've been watching this guy's tape and he's freaking impressive. When you guys think about this play, right? This play only picks up three yards, but this play had the potential to hit for a massive, massive yards. And it's because of TJ Bass's block. If you guys look at what he does here, he does a fantastic job reaching to the inside of this defensive tackle. He's going to make contact with him, let Josh Bogg get in front, and then he's going to pick off the linebacker. Look at the massive lane that's developing here. And had these two guys done a better job up to the linebacker here, the potential for this play was definitely there. That was because of what TJ Bass does on this play. You can see the two backside guys definitely got picked off. And this is what TJ Bass was doing pretty much the entire preseason. I'm very, very excited to get into this guy's tape. Let's jump right into it. One of the things I like with TJ Bass is he brings this mindset of physicality. He brings this mindset of wanting to hit people. And you see it so many times on tape. Now, he's not always laying people out. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is his mindset is always to try to win, to try to be physical, to play tough. And oftentimes you see plays where he'll double team on one guy, like you see here, and he'll go up and hit a different guy. And here's another example of it. Passes off the D tackle, comes back run, and takes a smack on the defensive end on this one. And I can show you guys 10 more plays of this. But I do like that mindset that this guy plays with. Just to kind of hone in on that point a little bit, watch the double team and watch the physicality to remove this defense tackle out of there. This is fourth and one, so they're going to run a quick inside power run to the inside, and you can see the double team really displaces this defensive tackle. They absolutely crush this guy and get him out of there, and to me, it's just that toughness, that physicality, the wantingness to move people and hit people. So that's a really nice shot right there. Check this run out, a really nice job by both the right guard and right tackle. You're going to see the movement once again get created, and then you're going to see Bass do a nice shot flipping the hips. This one hits for about 9 to 10 yards, but again, these are the little things that I look for, right? Make really nice contact, right guard and right tackle. Tackle's going to double and get up to the linebacker, and it is up to Bass at this point to flip the hips. It is up to Bass to recognize that you need to seal your defensive player off one way so the running back can have a lane the opposite side. So really nice job to recognize that. And of course, you see him obviously get the guy into the ground. Just a really, really nice job by Bass. And I think this is one of the things that if he keeps developing this right here, right, the toughness to being able to properly block guys off, to be able to get the angles that are necessary, the guy's going to be a starting guard one day in the NFL. He's a really, really good player. You can definitely see it within his reps. Check this play out. You got a zone to the inside. The center has a reach block on the 2 eye. This is a very, very difficult block. So the right guard has to double team, make sure the center is able to overtake that guy. And then from there, he has to get up to the linebacker. This is a really, really nice job initially. Now, the play actually doesn't work. That defense pack right there actually is the one to make the play. Uh, and I, I shouldn't say the play doesn't work. It still picks up three to four yards. So it's not a bad job, but... When you guys watch the play, to me, if this was Tyler Biadish or an NFL caliber starting center, you would say that Bass actually does a really nice job. Bass is going to get the left shoulder into the D tackle. He's going to hold the block as long as possible. And the center Hoffman here actually is in a really, really good spot. A better center here would flip the hips over to the right and they would seal this defensive tackle off. And you can see that Bass has his guy. Walensko has his guy. And there is a crease through here right now. Of course, the fullback here doesn't actually pick up the inside linebacker. So I don't know how much the play would have actually popped for, but you can definitely see that within the play, TJ Bass does his job. And I say that because the outcome of a play doesn't matter, right? TJ Bass can just straight up lose and the play can pick up 12 yards. To me, I would still say that's a losing rep, even if the outcome's 12 yards. And the opposite's true as well. So when a play only picks up three yards, we can still look at Bass at an individualized level and say if he did or did not do a good job. And in this instance, he does a great job. A better center here makes this block. But the only reason the center was even in position to make the block was because Bass is a really nice job with the double team. And you can definitely see that there was a small little crease there for this to possibly pop. Right. So again, nice job right there. If you guys ask me, let's go ahead and get to the next rep. One of the things I really like with TJ Bass is his pass pro technique. To me, it's very, very consistent. He gets out of his stance well. He mirrors well. He punches well. 
and he anchors down well. Like he can handle the power of defensive tackles in the NFL. And it's interesting because in college he was a left tackle. And in the NFL, he ended up becoming a guard. And to me, that's a hard transition to make because at guard, you're handling more power. But power doesn't really seem to be an issue for Bass. You can see it on this one here, this defensive tackle. Keep in mind, this was the defense tackle that the Kansas City Chiefs just traded the Las Vegas Raiders for. He's going to try to swipe. He's going to throw a right punch. I'm not too sure if he's 100% trying to swipe, if he misses a swipe. But you can see he's going to attack Bass here. He's going to get the right hand here, hits the shoulder pad. But that doesn't really phase Bass at all. It doesn't move him. It doesn't impact him. And he really just shuts this defensive tackle down. And you'll see on the on more reps as we watch him in pass pro, the guy's very, very consistent. Very, very, very solid technique. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. So the Raiders are going to bring a fire blitz over here towards the B-gap. And watch the exchange here by the right guard and center of this defensive tackle. Really, really nice shot picking this up. Bass is going to pass off. And he's going to come over to the right. Now, I'm not sure if it's the fullback that makes the mistake of not picking up the final guy. But it's still a good enough job where the quarterback's able to get the ball out, right? The fullback should have passed off this guy to Bass, and the fullback should have gotten off and picked up the other linebacker. Not a big deal, but you can see the exchange by Bass to his center. Without that exchange, Bass wouldn't have any sort of ability or opportunity to get off the block. So the pass off right there is beautiful by Bass. He's going to get over to the right. He's even going to pick up the fullback's guy. Keep in mind, the fullback has to now pass his guy off. And the fullback should be able to get up to number 56 here. He doesn't. Not a big deal. That's the point of preseason is for these guys to develop and really learn. As you guys see, the quarterback gets the ball out on third and seven. It picks up 16 yards. It's a really, really nice shot by Bass. Check the rep out. Watch the right guard on this one. He's going to do a really good job mirroring the defensive tackle. To me, it's just a really, really nice job. And you can see it that the D tackle is going to try to bull rush here. And not a great pass rush by the defense tackle, but you can see that Bass shuts this down super early. Right hand lands to the chest, left hand lands to the shoulder pad, and you're going to see he's going to just mirror the D-tackle. Just stay with it, stay on top of it. Really the nice job. Again, clean, it's consistent, really shuts it down, right? Doesn't allow the D-tackle to move him a whole lot. The D-tackle is trying to bull rush him back. It doesn't work. Quarterback gets the ball out. It's a nice job right there. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. Check this next rep out. Watch the right guard, right tackle on this one. Bass is going to do a great job with the D-line game. And just like that, that's a really, really, really nice job. And you can see at the end of it, kind of gets physical and, and hits uh, the defensive end as well. But to me, once again, it's a really nice job. He's going to take this defensive tackle. He's going to fully extend the arms out. Make sure that Matt Walensko has that defensive tackle before he gets off, comes back to the inside, and picks off the D-end. I mean, to me, it does not get better than this. For a rookie offensive lineman to come into the NFL and start to do this, that's impressive. That's very, very impressive if you guys ask me. So that's a really nice rep. Of course, within it, he wants to hit people. So I can appreciate that aspect of it as well. It's a really, really nice job. Check this run out by the running back on this one. Really nice job gain of about 12 yards. Once again, Bass is going to do a great job. He's going to help the right tackle overtake the defensive tackle. And just like that, he's going to reach up to the inside linebacker. Now, this one's a little bit easier because the D tackle isn't a three technique. So the reach is easier for the right tackle. But again, it doesn't happen without the right guard here getting out of his stance, getting low, making contact with the right shoulder, pushing, which allows the tackle to overtake, which allows the right guard to clear and get up to the inside linebacker. And he's going to do a great job reaching and making contact and holding on to that linebacker which allows Hunter Lipke here to make a really, really nice cut towards the outside. It's a beautiful job right there, if you guys ask me. As I mentioned earlier in this video, one of the things that Bass likes to do is he likes to hit people. He likes to play physical. He likes to play tough. And when a defensive end jumps up, you put him down. When a defensive end wants to give you a, a free shot at their ribs, you put him down. And that's what this defensive end does here. He's going to jump up. And you're going to see Bass absolutely crush him. So to me, this is exactly what I want to see right here by Bass. A guy jumps up and you hit him. You make sure that that guy feels it and he doesn't leave his feet again. Again, that mindset to me really, really stands out. Alrighty, guys, let's go ahead and jump back into the week two game. Because in my opinion, in week two, this guy had a lot of really, really nice blocks against the Seahawks. 
Starting with the first block here, he's going to double team on the one technique. The center is going to overtake that. He's going to get up to number 48. Just like that, you're going to get an 18-yard run. 100% because of that block right there by Bass. 18-yard run on this one. That's a really, really, really nice job. Again, to me, just the fact that this guy's able to understand the little concepts of how to make contact with the guy. Rather, it's the shoulder pad. Rather, it's the hands, the push of the hip to turn guys. The little things that people oftentimes overlook really stick out with Bass. I know some people don't care about the hand placements and those type of things, but it matters. Offensive line coaches teach it. And you can see Bass is well coached. To me, this is just such a nice job, the way he makes contact, the body positioning, the angle. And Malik Davis sees it on this one, and he ends up paying up 18 yards on this one. It's a really, really nice job right there. All right, you guys, check this out. Bass has an out block on this defense fan. No matter what, he needs to seal this guy off to the outside. But watch how he's going to fight this defensive end as he gets to the inside. And he makes sure throughout the entirety of this play that the defensive end can't get to the inside. Obviously, when the play ends, the defensive end kind of does. But to me, this is a really nice job getting to the inside. Forcing the defensive end to the outside now. He does kind of get outreached a little bit by the DN on this one. And we'll just talk about it a little bit. I don't think it's a big deal. It's not something that I've noticed. But on this one here, you can see he's trying to get his hands to the outside of the DN. And the DN lifts him up. All right, the DN is going to create that separation. So that's a nice rep by number 53 there. But again, he still does his job within the play where he's going to fight this defensive end and really give the running back the inside lane. Of course, the running back is already kind of tackled by the time a 53 gets off the block. And this is a 10-yard gain, so a really nice job. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. The Seahawks game was kind of interesting for Bass because he didn't start the game. Josh Wye ended up starting at right guard. And when he did play, he only played about 15 snaps before Ball came back into the game. And then Bass didn't play again until about eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. So I found it kind of interesting that they ended up keeping Ball at that guard position a little bit longer. Now, I think TJ Bass is better than Josh Ball. I don't think Josh Ball's that good of a guard. I think Josh Ball is more so of a tackle. And I know he's probably not going to play tackle in the NFL, so I'm not sure why the Cowboys have kind of kept him around. I definitely see a little bit of upside with Josh Ball, but I think TJ Bass is better. And these are the type of plays that really stick out to me, right? The mirroring ability is great, but even then, like you can see the hands get make contact with number 95 here. The hands are perfectly placed to the inside. Even as 95 initially makes the, the punch, he's going to um, initially remove Bass's right hand right there, right? You can see the right hand of Bass comes off. But Bass quickly readjusts and he gets the hands right back into number 95 as he's trying to hit his counter move. And Bass crushes this guy, right? And the quarterback obviously has the lane to the left, but he does get tackled by uh, the left tackle's responsibility. But again, from a technical standpoint, TJ Bass is freaking good. And it's very, very clear that maybe as Zach Martin retires, this is the, the starting right guard for the Cowboys. You know, Martin obviously has his contract. Everybody kind of knows uh, how he just got his contract redone for the next two seasons. But going into year three, which would be TJ Bass's year three, maybe Bass overtakes Martin and Martin's ready to step away from the game. All right, you see plays like this for a rookie to do. That's a good sign right there. The exchange here is a very, very, very flawless. And I know these are backup players. So always keep all of what we're talking about with the consideration that these are backup players, but this is still a really nice job by TJ Bass. And I think the upside for Bass is through the roof. And it's not surprising that the Cowboys kept him on a 53-man roster because if he wasn't on the 53-man roster, if the Cowboys waived him and tried to get him back on the practice squad, they would have lost him the same exact way they lost Isaiah Land. Now, as I said, I'm a big fan of TJ Bass, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, consider subscribing. We'll be doing Cowboys content on this channel weekly. We'll be checking on the offensive line, the defensive line, even some of the linebackers like Damone Clark and Leighton Van Der Esch, as well as Devin Harper, who may play a lot this year, some of the safeties and those type of things. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing, and I will see you guys next time with another video.